Uh, I don't know if this is where you want to talk about some uh, mechanical design or yeah, so something this in is, there. This is something that I noticed quite a bit on my first view through, and it's only become more apparent. So realistically, if this was a novel and they were adopting it from a novel, and I'm not sure how specific they get about the designs of their planes in the book, they could have gone with any design. They could have gone with re like reasonably enough any kind of weird, I think of like Crimson Skies as an example of just, it's World War II-y. I think I've, I've heard it described as diesel punk i'm not sure if i agree with uh, that specific description any but... any punk description never fits whatever anyone's uh, saying yeah it's more more or less it's just it's a world war ii looking without using just the planes however the mechanical design they used for their planes has a lot of signifiers in it and it specifically has a lot of signifiers not just in relation to just world war ii things but to the story itself so specifically they use the i think it's called the sanka b which is their main plane it's a pusher plane which means the propellers are at the back and they push the plane forward, which is the opposite of polar planes, which are much more typical in World War II, you know, movies. And if you just know about World War II, most planes were polar planes. Now, the reason for that is because their Sanka Bs are, I'm fairly certain, very heavily based on the Shinden, which was a late war Japanese fighter, which never saw mainline production. I think only one or two prototypes were built. It looks visually very similar, but because of the fact that it was kind of built towards the end of the war when Japan was desperate, and because it never saw real like production, it gained a kind of legendary status. As, as a kind of just a little bit of evidence for that, if you watch the Gainax film Wings of Honey Maze, the planes they fly, their propeller planes in that are also based on the Shinden. So if you think about the people who enjoy kind of World War II culture or World War II Japanese culture, the Shinden kind of became a wonder waff, which is like a like a wonder weapon. And part of the fact that there was called a wonder weapon, the concept isn't around the weapons actually being amazing or you know fantastically effective. It's more so just a it gains like a legendary status as a kind of just towards the end product of a nation that ended up losing. And so in the same kind of mental sense that somebody goes, man, what if, you know, what if they won? You kind of get that same interest in like, what if X was built? And in this case, the Shinden kind of became that. Uh, kind of another funny mechanical note is the fact that even though they don't show any major maps in the movie, there's only one very zoomed in map and it looks pretty artificial. It's just a scattering of islands separated by a channel. Yeah, it's uh, deliberately very vague about very things. vague however the mechanical design of their enemy which i think is called lautern if i remember correctly they they think they i think they fly for rostock and their enemy faction is called lautern the design of their bombers even if it was the other way around it wouldn't matter it wouldn't really matter but the the enemy factions bombers use all british designs so that's kind of a funny thing in and of itself and you kind of get from that implication just of how the map is oriented that the company that they're flying for beyond the fact that there are some other hints visually throughout the movie and they refer to their command as the it's the European Confederation. They're actually flying from whatever their in-universe World War II descendant state of the Axis or the European powers. They're actually flying against whatever the equivalent British island power is. So that's kind of a funny thing because that's not something you'd, you'd really think of. I mean, once again, they're flying Japanese, not even real planes, Japanese-based kind of legendary planes mm -hmm. against these other planes that are kind of a, a weird hybrid of a bunch of British designs. And then, of course, like absolutely the hands down star plane in, from my opinion is the I think it's called the J2V uh, or the Skyly the Skyly J2V which is teacher's plane now teacher's plane if you just look at it normally seems like a very pimped out plane but if you don't know a lot it just looks like a pimped out plane if you know a bit the J2V is kind of what you would get if you tried to combine Goku and Superman and and Naruto and like every powerful character into one except instead of powerful superhero characters you're combining the kind of mythical allied planes of, of World War II. It's got a bit of some German fighter plane in it, but in comparison, that thing is a giant heap of just like, you've got some Yak in there, some obvious bits of Mustang. It's got gull wings from some British fighters. It's got a double counter-rotating propeller. It's got, so if you think about engines, there's V engines and there's W engines where you have a piston in the middle and two on the side. It's got an X engine, which is four pistons firing at 90 degrees away from each other and it's an inline X piston engine, which is kind of like putting that in a fighter jet is the equivalent of putting like a, a, a V6 on a bicycle. It is insane. This thing is a super, like, it's almost like a, you think of like a DeviantArt guy making his own original character with all the all the superpowers. He's got heterochromia, he's got a katana and a, and a long sword and a lightsaber. It's like ridiculous. This thing, everything about it screams that this thing is in a completely different league from any other aircraft in 
in the in the um, movie pretty much. And the nose art specifically, that black nose art, I can't remember the exact World War II German ace, but there was one ace, might have been Eric Hartman, I can't remember exactly which, but they used a similar design of an animal head stretched back in black. They used a bird in the movie, it's it's a cat. But all the iconography there of how that plane is built and the turbocharger on the side and the air cooling bubbles on the back, everything about it screams like this is just a league above. It's like the, the Sanka B that the main characters are flying, they're like stormtrooper armor. It's it's that much separate and that's like a Darth Vader suit in terms of how <laughs> how ridiculously powerful and kind of on another level that, that plane is. And so if you apply that mechanical design to the characters specifically, that's kind of interesting because in that way you have the kind of like the Wonder Waff or Wonder Waff, but ultimately Germany and Japan lost, right? And so you have these characters which are ultimately defeated. The children are are killed. They don't they don't ever win the war. They fight and in a way because they never win, they're just not even they don't even lose. They're stuck in this kind of limbo. And then because Teacher is this character who represents this kind of overlord, this like admin, where it's almost like a force of nature, it isn't even really like a pilot, it feels like the way that they yeah, interact. The choice of name too is very interesting. Yeah, it's 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 teacher. It's a call sign. It's not it's not a name. And even oh, then yeah, it yeah. might just be might just be a nickname, right? Um, but yeah, the fact that it's you have all the iconography of the winning sides planes, a lot more than the little elements of you know German or whatever that might sneak in there. It's it's absolutely mainly a a Russian, American, British plane. And that's like that just gets into the whole mentality of who ultimately succeeds, who is the winning character kind of in the war in real life, but also in the story. And that so that's interesting. So you have this mechanical design, could have been completely arbitrary. They could have made them look like whatever, painted them red, you know, there was wasn't really a huge impetus, but they worked who the characters were and how that mechanically could be metaphorically represented into the planes that they end up flying. And I think that's that's very, very impressive. And it's a good use of, of creative mechanical design.